Today we are going to be talking about the Friedman IRX. Stay tuned. Let's get something off the way. What this is and what this is not. What is not? I'm not going to go through all the specs of the thing because there's a gazillion videos doing that already. So this is more of a video where I'm going to show you my experience, what I think is they got right, what I think they got not so right, and who I think this may be for and not. This is an analog pedal. It's an amp. It's got tubes in it. Uh, it's not a gimmicky tube type thing, it really is the real deal, it's an amp, 100%, and it's got emulation for the cabinets, which you can bypass, by the way. So, it's two channels, it's got a boost in each one of them, which you can select how much gain you want for each one of the boosts, uh, and that's essentially what it is. So, let's talk about first the good stuff, the things that I really got surprised and, and impressed by. It feels like an amp, because it, it is an amp. Uh, it's just beautifully sounding. Whenever you, like, I, I handpick for the most part, so sometimes when I'm playing digital stuff and I move my hands, I get the <laughs> and fair enough, you can get that also with an amp, but it's uh, more pleasant, more interesting, more alive type of feel or sensation. So that I really liked a lot. The things that I recorded testing the, the thing were, were just outstanding sounding. It's like an album of your favorite guitar player or something like that. I got super excited about it. Just both playing uh, lead and playing rhythm. It's got a ton of sustain. It's just, I don't know, it feels right. It's great. Now let's talk about things that I didn't really like all that much about it. The placement of some of the knobs. For instance, you have the knobs for the uh, boost all the way to the left of the pedal, which is usually where, where you find the volume. So it's kind of counterintuitive, or it was at least for me. And then the switch for the uh, boost is all the, way, all the way to the right. And to make things even a bit more complicated, the light that you see when you engage the boost is neither uh, by the boost or by the volume of the boost is somewhere else in the other extreme of the pedal which is also a little weird so i wish everything was lined up nicely that's that that was uh, i know that might be like something that feels like nitpicking but since you're doing it why not make it the easiest for the player but this is an amp and it's got both volume and gain but we all know that when you raise the volume in an amp at to a certain point, say up to three or four, you, you see an increase on the volume. And after that, it continues to increase, but you're hearing more of the distortion of the amp, which you may like or you may not. That's, that's where my favorite tone usually lives. And then, of course, you have the knob for the gain or distortion, which is separate. I, I was expecting that. In the case of this pedal, the volume is just a volume. It doesn't really seem to affect the tone, or at least in my experience, it didn't. If, you, if you've if you seen different or um, I am completely wrong, point it out. Shame on me, through tomatoes. The mid, treble and bass uh, knobs work wonders. They really dial it in. And whenever I try to get this to cut through the mix, it did it in a very natural way, which I really like and appreciate. So that's a big thumbs up for me. Uh, I had uh, I had trouble also. Something that I didn't really like was the gain knob. The gain is great, very very organic. Like the sound itself is not a problem, but the knob is because it affects the volume. So I found that the the biggest pet peeve for me on this pedal is the volume changes are, to me, they've been kind of like a letdown because you get the right volume with your volume knob and then you change the gain and suddenly it's super loud or super soft. And it's, it's kind of like, okay, so now I have to go to the volume and see if I'm picking again, or it's just to dial your tone, you have to constantly be moving one or the other. I didn't like that all that much. 
you get to choose several caps for each one of the channels you have three and three you can load more with their website uh, with their software and uh, they sound very well they are very distinctive each one of them who's this for and who's this not for or what's the usage for this pedal well it's uh, i'm a little conflicted by that because in one hand it's a pedal so looks like it's meant to be on the floor and you, you, you hit the switches with your feet. But would you? So I have a few problems with this. The first one is, it's a $500 pedal in which the volumes, I mean, the, the knobs are at the same height on the same plane at the same height as the switches. Do I really, if I'm playing live, the energy is up, do I wanna risk hitting the, the knobs and breaking something? It's just, it doesn't feel like the best design for something like that's gonna be on the floor. Um, and not only that, not just if I break it, but what if I'm playing, I hit a channel or the boost and I, with my foot uh, or my feet, foot, I accidentally touch one of the knobs. The volume, as I explained before, is very, very volatile. So it may be super loud suddenly or super soft. It's just it doesn't seem like something I would be comfortable relying on, my ability to, to hit the switch without touching anything at all. So I wouldn't use it live unless it was over a table or something like that and, and I, I had time to switch with my hands, but then why is it made for the floor? I don't know, I'm confused. I'm thinking one solution that would have worked wonders towards the leaving the pedal on the floor and whatnot would have been the uh, possibility of an extension pedal because I could plug it in, leave it in, in a table or somewhere raised where I know nothing's gonna touch the knobs. And then with my feet, I can change the pedal. So it solves the problem of moving the, um, the knobs. It solves the problem of spills, beer spills. I know you guys know and whatnot. And I think that would have been a cheap and easy solution because uh, an, uh, an, an extension pedal can cost you like 20 or 30 bucks. Uh, you're not winning your, your amazing uh, Friedman pedal and that could have been great. It's an idea. In my opinion, this is something that I would use on the studio uh, because you, you have the time, you're not gonna trip on it, there's not gonna be any incidents where there's gonna be surprises and you can simply click, dial, take your time dialing, dialing the knobs and getting the right volume and whatnot. So those are my thoughts. If you liked what you saw and you're interested in more reviews or in my opinion on more pieces of gear, you're all welcome to subscribe. Welcome, invited, encouraged. Uh, if, you, if I missed something or you disagree with something, that always creates an interesting debate. So feel free to leave it in the, in the um, comments and I will see you guys in the next video.